Okay, so what are we going to do? Let's just put this up. So self-study, um, quite a difficult thing to do. Um, you're working at home, we've all been sort of sheltering and self-isolating and staying away from people. Um, in some ways it could be an ideal time to, to study at home. But we're going to try and give you some practical advice to how to go about that. And then we'll look at in some detail about how you can use the self-study program for writing task one and two. We'll look at some top tips for improving uh, your writing, even when you're working at home by yourself. Uh, and a summary and then some questions and answers. Okay, so let's start with the practicalities of working from home, from studying by ourselves at home. So there are a number of sort of practical things that we need to think about um, before we even start um, studying at home. What sort in the chat box, please? What sort of things do you think um, we have to consider, we have to plan before we start studying at home? What sort of things, goals that somebody <laughs> breaks? Yeah, absolutely, Ahmed. Goals and breaks, good study atmosphere, distractions, yeah, organize ourselves, materials, room, time management, yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, all we should know what to study, absolutely schedule. Now, all of these are e excellent, excellent answers. So, I mean, we're all we're all different. We're all living in different environments and conditions. So I think trying to establish a routine that suits you best and is appropriate to your living conditions is very, very important. So let's start with one thing I think is important, um, <clears throat> excuse me, setting a target. Um, one of the most important things about studying your, on your own is being clear about what you want to get out of it, what you want to achieve. For each of the self-study programs, that's writing, reading, listening, and speaking, you need to set yourself realistic target-based um, targets based on the time you have available. It could be something simple like this week I will write and check two writing task one questions or this week I will start a vocabulary notebook and will record at least five new words and expressions a day and try to learn them. So break up what you need to do into small achievable chunks. Write your targets down, and at the end of the study period, tick off the ones you have achieved. This helps you build motivation. I mean, I love writing lists of things that need doing, and then ticking them off or crossing them out is an enormous pleasure. And I feel as if I've really done something. Um, that might work for you too. Um, if there were some you didn't achieve, Perhaps ask yourself why um, did I set too many targets? Were the targets uh, too broad or, or too big to actually achieve in the time? And use this analysis to set more realistic targets for your next study period. I think regular setting and reviewing of achievable short-term targets will help you stay motivated and stay studying. Okay, next thing, a place to study. Now, ideally, it would be a room of our own. Um, that's not always possible. So find a place. It doesn't have to be huge, but a place that can be your study corner, your little niche, and where you can keep all the things you need like pens and papers, notebook, if you're like me and still like actually having a physical notebook, um, dictionary perhaps, and of course your computer or your device. And it's a real bonus if you can make sure you've got somewhere with natural light and a comfortable chair. Okay, and this sort of 
having this little corner keeps your study area separate from the rest of your life in some way. It can be anywhere, but it should be a place where you can be alone or at least minimize the interruptions. It's really, really difficult to study at the kitchen table when perhaps the radio or the television's on, or you've got other people around you having uh, conversations. Um, having Perhaps having less time, but being able to really focus and concentrate um, is the way to do it. Okay, and then when to study. Um, well, choosing a time when you're at your best and you can really concentrate. Some of us are morning people. I'm a morning person, I'm a lark. Um, others at their peak in the evening, the owls amongst us. Um, there's no right time. Um, there's just a time that's right for you. And of course, you'll need to think about how this fits in around the needs of the people you're living with. So let's find out whether we've got some uh, larks or owls, owls or in between us. So, for a poll question, um, if you can't see it, the question is, when do you study best? Mornings, afternoons, or evenings? Mornings, afternoons, or evenings? Please put your uh, answers in the chat box if you can't see the, the poll question. Okay, mornings, evenings, afternoons, all of the above. Well done, Philip, if you can study all day, that's excellent. Can we have the results, please? Okay, so nearly half are larks like me, but 40% are evening studiers, and a number of you, a smaller number, can study well in the afternoons. Okay, well, as I said, each, each to their own. Okay, uh, next one. How long to study for? Again, this target setting, it's really important to be realistic about how much time you'll spend on your studies each day. If you try and do too much and get distracted or disturbed, you might feel a bit disappointed in yourself and perhaps become demotivated. Again, there is no right length of time, um, but the best advice is to fix a time that suits you and do it regularly. After all, even if it's a short period of time to start with, you can always extend that um, later if you want to. So let's think, uh, how long would you study? Um, so in the chat box, tell us how much time you think you'll be able to spend studying each day and using this program. Two hours, three hours, five to six hours, that's very ambitious. But obviously people are very keen, two to three, whole day, yep, three to five hours, two hours. Okay, everybody, uh, well, as I've said at the beginning, everyone's different and in different circumstances um, and have different needs. Okay, excellent, all right. Some people can do four hours of study. Okay, um, absolutely fine. You need to make sure it's a time that suits you, a duration that suits you. Okay, what else to think about? You should think about getting some support. Um, you might find it really helpful if you've got a friend who's also start studying for IELTS and perhaps he is using these self-study guides as well. Perhaps you could arrange a time to chat about what you've learned and perhaps what you found difficult. I think talking through your work with someone else often makes it clearer in your own mind, in your own head. It, it's sort of clarifies things. Another option um, is to share your progress with friends on social media each week or inform a family member what you have achieved. Explain you just want them to, I don't know, acknowledge and encourage you to keep going. Even if they can't actually help you with the content of what you're doing, I think just telling somebody else about it helps you validate for yourself what you've done and again helps build the motivation to keep going and finally be kind to yourself remember to be kind to yourself if you plan to study for more than an hour at a time do give yourself little breaks even if you just stand up and have a stretch 
give yourself a treat or, or a, a little reward when you've achieved something. I mean, that would be chocolate in my case. Um, congratulate yourself for whatever you have managed to do. Even if you didn't do as much as you wanted or planned to do, always focus on the positive. Okay, so let's find out how you would reward yourself or give yourself a treat. You've just completed a nice bit of study, you've done really well. What little treat would you give yourself? Tell us in the chat box. Take a break, sleep, okay. Play a game, ice cream, cup of tea, a massage. Oh yeah, that'd be nice. <laughs> Chips, coffee, watch a movie, take a nap, a walk, yes, yep, a little nap. Lots of you like a little bit of exercise, a little bit of sleep after your studies. Listen to music, tea, okay, excellent. Gardening, that's a nice thing to do when you've been studying. <laughs> Someone, yes, wants to watch a movie, eating a bar of chocolate is sufficient. Okay, I think everybody knows exactly the right way um, to treat themselves. Okay, so let's look at um, what we are trying to um, achieve. What are the aims of this writing self-study program that you have? Okay, so the main aims are that you understand the format of the writing test and what sort of task you have to do. The more you know about what is going to happen in the test, uh, the more confident it can make you feel. You don't then have to worry about all of that. You know exactly what you're doing and you can focus on the task itself. Um, we'd like that you understand how your writing is assessed and then you, how, how the, what the examiner is looking for in your writing to achieve the scores that you want. And then help you to be able to analyze your own writing. I know that's very, that's very difficult, um, but I think many people at the moment in a position where there aren't any language courses, they don't have an English teacher or an IELTS teacher to help them mark their essays or whatever. So I think we have to, you have to develop a way of being able to evaluate your own essays to a certain extent anyway. Um, and then we can look at the program shows you how to um, develop the appropriate vocabulary for writing task one and writing task two and the appropriate grammatical structures. Okay, so um, let's look now then in more detail about the program. For, oh, let's just show you what a typical day um, is first. Okay, so in your um, PDF of the, the program, your self-study program, which you can download, the, each of the skills, so writing task one, is divided into five days. You don't have to do a day each time. A day, we mean, it's about anything between two and four hours, each of these day programs. But obviously, you could spread that over two days if you wanted. It's entirely up to you. Like we said earlier, you have to work out the duration um, of time you want to spend studying. And so each day has a number of websites. They're completely free links. All of the material is free. You click on them and then you do the practice um, we advise. So each one, it's not just a matter of going to the website. Each one, you'll have a specific task to do whether it's grammar or vocabulary, whether it's analyzing a question, whether it's writing something, there'll be a very, very specific task for you to do. And the idea is that you work through, each day you work through those tasks. Okay. So, as I say, more detail uh, about program for writing task one. Okay, so on day one, um, we've got um, knowing about the test and understanding how the test is marked. So um, you'll go to websites where you can look at the information about the test, you can understand how the, what the examiner is looking for, and you can download um, what we call public band descriptors. And this is a public version of 
what the examiner uses to mark your essays. And it's really, really useful um, to have that to be able to analyze your own writing. So for example, on that day one, this is one of the websites we send you to, which gives you um, a description of what actually happens in the test. And then there's more information and other sites um, to visit, to read and do tasks as well. Okay, so um, on day two, we think it's quite important that you know what your level of English is at the moment, because that will give you a good idea of the sort of score that you might get in the IELTS test. So we send you to the British Council site where you get a completely free um, language, English language level test, which will tell you um, what level you are at currently. So I think that's really worthwhile doing. Um, then we're going to, you'll be looking at um, the grammar and vocabulary practice for describing charts. So that could be a pie chart or a bar chart or a line graph. Those are three very common um, types of task for writing task one. And then um, once you've done that grammar and vocabulary practice, there'll then be a practice task for you to do, and then an analysis of your writing. Again, all of this you'll have help with. There'll be questions to ask um, and things like that. So um, it should be easy for you to get some idea uh, of what your writing is like. But before we go on, um, just out of interest, what, what, do we, what do you do already to practice your grammar and vocabulary? Tell us in the chat box, what do you actually do to help yourself improve your grammar? Reading, okay, good. Lots of you are using reading, excellent. They're absolutely right. Some using grammar books, speaking with native people, excellent. Yeah, blogs, watching videos, doing practice tests can help too. Cambridge Grammar Books, yeah, newspapers. Yeah, everybody's got absolutely the right idea. Okay, so yes, lots of practice. And it doesn't all have to be heads down, study, study, study practice. It can be watching a film, something on YouTube, talking to a native English speaker or somebody with a good level of English. It can be fun things as well as heads down study. Okay, and then on day three, oh sorry, this is again one of the sites we'll send you to and gives you an example of a sort of typical um, task one question. In this case, it's a line graph um, for you to analyze and to practice on. Okay, and on day three, um, we'll have a look, you'll look, be looking at on day three at describing a process diagram. That is um, a, di a diagram that shows you how something is manufactured or made in some way. And these do come up as another one of the, the types of things that you get in task one. So we'll be looking at the, the grammar um, that you will need for, for doing that and the vocabulary for describing process diagrams. And then again, you'll practice um, actually writing a process diagram question. Um, let's just see what you know about process diagrams though. Um, what, in terms of the grammar, um, what type of, what form do we often have to use the verbs in, in a process diagram? Put your ideas in the chat box. Yeah, everybody's Nicholas, yes. Mutaz, Athanasia, Inde, Zainab, yes. Florian, okay. Yeah, a lot of you are saying passive voice, Sil Sayed. Yep, Bilal, simple. Yeah, okay, excellent. So very often um, we have to use the passive voice um, for describing a process because we're not interested in the people who are doing the work, if you like, who are making things. 
we're more interested in the object, the thing that is being made. And for that, we need the um, passive voice. And usually, many of you were right that often that is in the present uh, simple, so present simple passive. Uh, a lot of olive oil is produced in Italy. Um, and most of the processes, I think it's fair to say, are um, sort of processes that are happening now. And so the present passive is fine. But do double check because it's always possible that they will use um, an old process, I, uh, how the Egyptians made pap papyrus or something like that. So do double check that it's a, think about whether it's a current uh, process or an ancient process. And so we send you to here where you can do a grammar test to make sure you understand how to use the passive. Okay, um, going on to day four, um, the other type of um, diagram that, <coughs> excuse me, that you might have um, is a two, a map question, or two, sometimes it's one map, sometimes it's a two map question. And again, we'll be looking, you'll be looking at that, thinking about those, and again, doing some of the grammar practice that you will need for making comparisons between two maps. And then on the last day, it's a matter of pulling everything together that you've done for the previous four days. And it gives you a chance to do further practice in writing and also to analyze and correcting your work. And there you will have, once you've written your essay, your report, you'll then have a number of questions that you can work through to ask yourself about your, your writing to help you improve for the next time. Okay, so that's the five day program for studying by yourselves writing task one. Let's move to writing task two. Okay, so knowing about writing task two. Um, okay, in the chat box, I'm sure you all know the answer to this, but what type of task is it in writing task to writing? Essay, essay, essay. <laughs> yep, okay, writing an essay. Everybody seems to know that. Okay, so more information, please. What sort of essay do you have to write? Yes, somebody saying opinion, argument. Yes, argumentative. Uh, well, giving arguments, yes, opinion essay. Problem and solution, Margarita, yes, exactly. Yep, okay, people have ob obviously um, know their stuff. Yep, so you have the sort of to what extent do you agree? You have uh, some people think this, some people think that, what do you think? And you have a problem and you're asked to describe what the solutions are perhaps. Very good, okay. So it's just getting more information about what the task is, again, so you, you can feel confident um, when you go into the test center. Okay. On day two, um, we'll be looking, you'll be looking at how the test is assessed. And again, I know a lot of you have been to these webinars before and know lots and lots of things about the IELTS test. So in the chat box, please, there are four criteria, there are four areas that the examiner is marking you on. What are they? Task response, cohesion and coherence. Very good. Grammar, yes. One more that's missing, vocabulary. Absolutely. So um, task response, um, how well you answered the question. Coherence and cohesion, how your essay is linked. Uh, lexical resource, your vocabulary. And grammatical range and accuracy, your grammar um, and how well you use it. Okay. And so in this, um, on day two, we're working, you'll be working principally on trying to improve your coherence and cohesion. So coherence, the logical flow of your essay and cohesion, the way you link your ideas together. 
Um, so you'll be given practice on that. And also um, building your um, academic vocabulary, because both task one and task two uh, require that you use formal academic style vocabulary um, rather than the sort of more informal language that we use to each other when we're speaking. Um, and so this on day two of this particular program, you'll be looking at those two things in particular. And let me give you an example about the building your um, academic vocabulary. Okay, so we send you to a site which is the academic word list, which you can probably tell from the name is a list of academic words. And they're broken down into what they call sublists. And this is sublist 1A, which has the, the most common, uh, the 10 most common words that come up in formal academic writing. And there's lots and lots and lots of lists and lots and lots and lots of exercises. This is just one exercise on the first sublist, which is a matching exercise, but there's lots of other things you can do on this site. And again, this is all in the program. So it helps you with word building and developing your vocabulary. For example, here we have the noun economy. Economy, okay? Um, I hope you can all see that the CO is uh, highlighted in, and in bold because that's where the word stress is, economy. So I'm going to now test you and I would like you to put your answers in the chat box, please. Okay, are you ready? Test number one. What is the noun for the subject you might study? Using economy as the sort of root word, what word can you make from economy that means the noun for the subject you might start at, you might study at university? Okay, economics, yes. Yeah, everybody's getting that, Veronica, Maria. Ikra, Chiara, Celia, excellent. Okay, well done, everybody. That wasn't a problem. Okay, the one thing is to notice, though, that we say economy, but we say economics. So can you see that the word stress has shifted um, from one to the other? Okay, test number two. What is the noun for the person who studies this subject? What is the noun for the person who studies economics? Okay, yes, student, I love it, yes, they are a student. Uh, excellent answer, but more exactly, yes, Kira, yes, Karishma, Lillian, it's also saying student. Pooja, Hassan, yes, okay, again, everybody seems to have that clearly. They're an economist, they're an economist. Okay, very good. Test number three is a double test. What are the two adjectives that you can make using this root word again? What are the two adjectives that you can use? Okay, yes, Katerina, economic. Susanna, economical. Federico, economic. Economically, Deepak is an adverb. Economical, yes, yes, okay. So everybody can do this very straightforwardly, economic and economical. Okay, um, so just one little final test on this. Um, those two adjectives, economic and economical, um, some people sometimes get them a bit confused. So um, which one, economic or economical, means or roughly means sort of cheap or efficient? doesn't use much time or energy. Which of those two? Okay, Alicia. Okay. Yes, 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 Samuel. Yep. Ida. Okay, yeah. So economical is, is an adjective. You might use that to describe um, your car. If you have a car and it doesn't use much petrol, um, it's cheap to run. Um, that sort of, it, it describes that sort of thing. The word you're more likely to use, the adjective you're more likely to use in academic writing 
is economic, because you might be talking about the economic situation in the world, uh, economic crisis, etc., etc. So all of this sort of information, this sort of practice is available in the word list, academic word list. So do go there and do practice. Day three, again, it's looking at trying to improve your grammatical range for writing task two and practicing a task two essay. Here is an example of the sort of um, essay you might get in task two. And notice the important things, um, give reasons, include relevant examples, and write at least 250 words. At least, so that's the minimum. Little question for you, is there a maximum? Is there a maximum number of words? No, good, well done, agree. There's no maximum, there's only a minimum. Okay, but realistically, you've only got 40, about 40 minutes for writing task two. So, I, you know, if you're, if you're writing about 270, 280, that sort of number, that would be about right. Okay, and then on <clears throat> day four, um, this one works on improving uh, your lexical resource, more work on word building. It also helps you build, uh, helps you develop your coherence and cohesion by looking at using pronouns. And I think many of you are used to putting in linking words. So despite, whereas, secondly, finally, all of those sort of words that we use to signpost where our essay is going and to link our ideas. But if you like a slightly higher level way of doing that is to use pronouns. So instead of um, repeating a noun, using you use a pronoun. <clears throat> or you might use something like this means, using this to represent the idea in the previous sentence. So it gives you practice on that slightly higher level of um, cohesion, cohesion work. And <clears throat> The other thing for day four is I know lots of my students in my classes, um, the one thing they, they really say is difficult for them is how to find ideas when they haven't thought about the topic very much before. So we also have put in some ideas for you to practice developing ideas for these essays. And lastly, like in the last day for writing task one, it's actually a, a timed practice, so 40 minutes writing, and then an analysis of your essay. There's a long checklist for you to read the questions, read your essay, see whether you did that or didn't do it, and being able to work out um, how you've improved since day one. Okay, so let's then look at some top tips okay um, i think when i asked you earlier um, about how you studied already a lot of you put in reading and i was really really pleased to see that um, because reading helps good writing as much as anything else does but try and be active readers <clears throat> excuse me not passive readers don't just read an article and think, oh, well, I've done my reading for today or, you know, whatever. But try and um, ask yourself questions. Be a really active reader. Um, so, you know, find useful vocabulary and expressions and, and note them. Ask yourself at the end of the reading, did you agree with it? Um, with uh, If it was an article in a newspaper or a news journal. Um, did you agree with what the writer was saying? Did you think it was well written? Did you think it was interesting? Would you like to know more about that subject? Um, try and ask yourself questions rather than just see it as something that you've done and finished with. Keep good vocabulary records. Now, everybody records vocabulary in different ways. You can make lists, um, you can use mind maps, you can do it by subject. Um, 
any way that you like, that you choose, that's useful for you. The most important thing is you can find the words again after you've recorded them. So whatever you, way you want to. But do remember that a good vocabulary record, uh, record is not just the word in English and the translation into your language, but it's also important to record the part of speech, for example, whether it's a noun or a verb. Um, if it's got another word that goes with it, is there a, um, perhaps a preposition after it or before it? Is there another word that collates that goes very strongly with it? All of this um, can be recorded. And also write all the parts down. So if you've got the verb allow, write down the noun, allowance, write down the adjective, allowable. Um, so write out the word family as well to try and build your vocabulary. Um, be critical of your writing. Ask yourself um, what spelling or grammar mistakes you often make and write those down somewhere and try and eliminate those particular special um, mistakes that you, um, you make. Um, obviously, in the test itself, you won't have um, spell checkers or grammar checkers, um, but you will while you're studying at home. So what I would suggest is that you write your essay, okay, and then go away, leave it, because I find that if I've written something, I can't see my mistakes. So go and have that break, have that short walk, have that piece of chocolate, um, listen to some music, and then come back to your essay, put on the spell checker and the grammar checker, in English obviously, and then look through your essay. Look at the things that you can correct yourself, make a list of the words you're spelling wrongly, work out what the grammar mistake is, and make notes on those things. And each time you write, use the public band descriptors, which you can download on day one, to analyze your essays. And then look at what they say. For example, um, in band seven, for, ta for a band seven in task one, you need to write a clear overview. Ask yourself, did I write a clear overview? In task two for band seven, you have to write a clear position. So did you write a clear position? So you can use these public band descriptors um, to help you analyze your essays. Okay, so let's go through and summarize what, we, um, what we've looked at so far. Okay, so we looked at organizing a study place and study time, how important that was. Setting realistic targets. Don't be hard on yourselves. Um, produce lists of things that you think you can do. And remember, if you're anything like me, um, tick them off when you finish doing them to make yourself feel better. Um, then we looked at understanding task one and how it's assessed. You'll be looking at the vocabulary grammar for task one and some practice and of course the same for task two. Okay, um, we will finish now. I'm going to go over to the question.